afternoon. Today we'll be uh, starting a new chapter, but uh, this chapter, this is like a concluding part for the mentality. So initially I was expecting to do it for uh, some extent, but uh, we'll see, depend on the time. Uh, today we'll be discussing about few topics about mentalities in general. In the beginning of the mentality class, like there was a handout given as mentality part one, Nama. In that we explain about generally, normally what the literature says about mentality. I was mostly giving the information that we had in uh, the literature. Here I'm, I'm planning to uh, look into the uh, mentalities in, a, in some perspectives that would be useful uh, to our scriptural studies and also our meditation practice. The first topic is given as subjective experience. So the subjective experience means, now we already know, mentalities arise in clusters. It means chitta arise together with chetasikas. So when they arise, they cognize a particular object. So this cognition, if you remember the mentality lecture one, uh, in the beginning of the mentality lectures, we mentioned chitta cognizes an object, focuses on an object, having separated in it from other objects. Like there are many objects that can be perceived. So chitta delimits a, a particular object, having separated it from others. So this is the cognition done by chitta. Then when uh, together with the chitta, there arises some other men uh, mentalities. So the object which was delimited by the chitta, uh, is uh, uh, upon it other mentalities perform their functions. So collective, so this cognition, there is a cognition done by the chitta and then all the mentalities also contribute to this cognition. So we call it collective cognition. So cognition done by the chitta and the collective cognition done by all the mentalities. Actually what we practically experience is the collective cognition. Collective cognition means the involved the cognition done together by chitta together with the mentality. So then the level of the cognition done by the chitta increases. So the collective cognition is more advanced than co uh, actual cognition of the chitta. Actually, in the actual actuality, in the practicality, there is no such a cognition only done by chitta because uh, chitta can never arise alone. So what we have practically is the collective cognition. So in this collective cognition, uh, we call it the chitta and chetasikas. Chitta and chetasikas. This collective cognition. These chittas focuses open, open, on an object. So this knowing an object, being aware of an object, this we call a subjective experience. This word is adapted by from Western philosophers. So I'll be explaining it based on putting it a Buddhist perspective according to our tradition. So in the subjective experience, uh, there is no participle for this. We can call Aramana Gahana or something, but there is no Pali equivalent as Bhante. That's why I say this word is adapted from the Western philosophers. So in the subjective experience, there are two portions. The subjective part and the objective part. Chitta and Chetasikas are the subject here. Object is Aramana, we call. Right? If you write it in, better to write in Pali. So, Chitta Chetasikas focus on an Aramana. Sooner we will be discussing about these Aramanas in these lectures. So, this Aramana is the object part. So, according to Theravada tradition, in a subjective experience, it means Chitta Chetasikas taking the object. Subject and the object can never be the same. Subject and the object can never be the same. This is a fundamental theory. 
a simile given by the teachers as a knife cannot cut itself, and a knife cannot cut itself, chitta chetasikas cannot know themselves. Themselves means not other chitta chetasikas, a mental cluster cannot know itself. That is a very fundamental theory of the Theravadikas. They cannot know themselves. They always know about an object. Object is something other than the subject. The subjective experience, now we'll, what is this object, how to understand this object, we'll leave it to another lecture. It's a different case. There are many things to be discussed on this matter. But here we are talking about collectively this entire experience. In this experience, we, te we see two portions, the subject and the object. Subject is a chitta chetasikas, who does the action, and object is the arama. So in a subjective experience, we have an awareness towards an object. In addition to this awareness of an object, there is another awareness in these Chitta Chetasikas about its own presence, about its own existence. So I'm going to add another type of awareness to here. These subjective Chitta Chetasikas know the Aramana. At the same time, they have a sense of an awareness, sense of an awareness about its existence. So, they, these subjective experience, these, they, they, in addition to knowing them, we are, we, I'd like to add, they have a sense of awareness about their existence. It means Chitta Chetasikas have a sense of an awareness about their cognition. So what does this mean? Doesn't this contradict with the main fundamental that I said a few minutes ago? No. The first fundamental was subject and object can never be the same. It means Chitta Chetasikas cannot have an entire awareness about itself as its object. Chitta Chetasikas can never make themselves their object. But they do have a sense of an awareness. Sense. A certain kind of a feeling I would call, when this doesn't mix it with Vedana, a sense of its existence. So how do we understand this? This sense of their existence can be known when we recall a certain particular experience. It means that a subjective experience happens, afterwards with another group of Chitta Chetasikas, we recall this entire experience, for example. We recall this entire experience, these Chitta Chetasikas again. At that moment, for example, we saw the Swedagon Pagoda. And we recall this incident again. We recall the incident back. At that moment, we have a particular familiarity about this incident. Familiarity means we know that I saw it. It is, that is what I mean at the familiarity. So how to distinguish it from other, other recalling? So for example, we go to the Swedagon. We saw the Swedagon standing in front of it. We come back. When we recall the seeing of Swedagon, the wave is there and I was seeing, like, like from a camera, we were seeing. So at that time, when we recall it back, we have a some kind of a sense that I saw it. We have a certain kind of a feeling of my exist, our existence there. So we call, I saw it. So how this is different from memory about the facts. Because these two memories, memory about the facts and memory about the subjective experience, subjective memory are two things. So what, is the, what do I mean by memory about facts and subjective memory? For example, we read about the expedition or the great exp uh, invasion done by the Alexander the Great from the Macedonia till the river Sint in India. We read this. Most, mo most of the people have read this story, at least in brief. So if you have read this and when you recall this incident, I'm not talking about you reading the book. When you recall or think that, Ma that Macedonia, from Macedonia till uh, river Sint, Alexander the Great with an army of nearly 20,000 soldiers 
invaded and uh, invaded the uh, invaded the uh, entire Asia, uh, Europe and Asia till India. So that information, when we recall, it is something that is a fact for us, but we haven't experienced it. It's a fact. It's a historical fact stored in our memory. But think about an incident, accident that you saw in the road. When you recall back, it is not like the recalling the incidents about the Alexander's expedition. You know that you witnessed it. When you saw an accident in the road, when you recall it back, you know that you had experience. So we call, I witnessed it, it with first hand experience. So what is the difference between these two information in both the occasions? In the first occasion, we know based on the historian's records, Alexander the Great did these, 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 these things in his uh, expedition. But in the accident that we experienced by ourselves, there are also facts because we saw the car was crashed. And in addition to this fact of car crash, we know that we saw it, we experienced it. In the Alexander's expedition, there are maybe some true facts, some false facts, but we know them as facts, but we don't have an experience, direct experience on them. So likewise, in the memory regarding the facts, we don't have a familiarity that the sense that led us to feel that I knew it by myself. But when regarding the accident that we experienced by with ourselves, first hand experience, when we recall it, we have a certain familiarity that I existed observing that. So this difference, how do we explain this difference? In the why we experienced the accident, our Chitta Chetisikas was observing this incident. It was the object, the car crash was the object. So our Chitta Chetisikas observed it. At that moment, those Chitta Chetisikas had a certain kind of a sense of feeling, had a sense of a feeling about their existence. How, why do I say so? Now think about this. Now I'm telling about two types of awareness in a Chitta Chetasika. Chitta Chetasika are aware of the object, that is very clear. At the same time, Chitta Chetasikas are aware of its own existence. It, may, it is not that they are making it as the object. It's, it's a one kind of an inbuilt quality of the Chitta Chetasika. That's what I'm going to explain. So how do we prove it? If, for example, if the, in the accident, the car accident, incident or in the looking at the Sweda God. If there was no such a sense, for example, if there was no such a sense of Chitta Chetta Sikhas about their existence, when you read now, for example, a person saw the Sweda God Kanguda, you recall it back. Now think, if this sense of existence, sense about awareness of its own existence, did not, did, was not found in the Chitta Chetta Sikhas, what would be our recalling would like be? When, so now I'll come, come to that point again, maybe I didn't express my idea clearly. Now Chitta Chetta Sikhas observed the Swedagon. So I say they had two awareness, awareness about the Swedagon and awareness of his own existence. If this second awareness was not there, if it was not there, when you recall back, when you recall back that incident, you will only remember the object of Sedagon. You cannot have that familiar feeling. Why? Because Chitta Chetisikas had only awareness about the object. If they didn't have this sense of feeling about its existence, you can never get this familiar feeling. Why? It's just, the ob you can only recall the object. So when you recall it back, why do you get this sense of feeling, familiarity? The idea that I experienced it. Why do we feel like that? Why it is different from just a fact? Looking at Swedagon is only not a fact of the Swedagon for you. It also gives a sense that I saw it, I was there, my existence. It's a self idea, we'll come to that later, but that kind of a familiar exist feeling of I or that you experience is found. So why that feeling is possible? Because in the initial moment, when the Chitta Chetisikas were focusing at the object, 
it also had a certain sense of its existence. So when the second Chitta Chetasikas recall this incident, it knows the incident of looking, it knows the object, and also it becomes sensitive that to that sense of awareness which existed in those chittas. So therefore, when you recall an incident back, we remember the Chitta Chetasikas which saw it, we remember the object and also we get the sense of feeling of our existence at that moment. So that is what I wanted to say. In the subjective experience, Chitta Chetasikas not only focuses on an object. There is the clear, the main awareness is about the object. But at the same time, they have one kind of a sense of awareness about their existence. This awareness is the main reason, is the most fundamental reason for us to have the idea of I. Because of this sense of existence about itself, we feel that I look, I talk, I experience, I felt, I knew. All these ideas are possible because of the Chitta Chetasikas have this sense of its own existence or own cognition. So this is the main basic idea that I want to explain with regard to subjective experience. So I will conclude it again. Chitta Chetasikas know a certain object. The, the, the Chitta Chetasikas are called the subject and the object, uh, Aramana is called the object. So at that while it is having the awareness about the object, together with the awareness of an object, it also has a certain sense awareness of its own existence. So how do we verify this existence? Because when you recall back this incident, you are not only recalling this object, you are not only recalling the Chitta Chetsikas, but you have a sense of familiarity that I saw it, that you experienced it. So what is the reason for that? Because it had a certain kind of a sense of a awareness of its own existence. That is why when you call, recall back something, that is the main reason, main reason for memory to be distinguished as memory about facts and the subjective memory. So with the subjective memory, we get the idea, I experienced that, it was my experience, and also want to emphasize this awareness is the most fundamental reason why we get the feeling of I regarding this Nama and Rupa. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The first one, what is your reference for this theory? This is practical experience. The second one, you said that this sense of awareness about yeah. their own existence, uh, this is, uh, you said that this is different from another Jita Jita Siga to take this Jita Jita Siga as, ob as object. You said it. What do you mean? This Sorry. kind of. Uh, the, the sense of awareness yeah. about their own existence. Yeah. Uh, you, you said it's different from another second, uh, immediately second Jita Jita Sika take this as object. Yeah, different, yes. Uh, so why you know it is different? Because that's why we get the feeling that I saw it. Why do you get when you recall that? Uh, no, no, not really to recall, I mean, in that time. Because in the Vipana meditation, we also say when Chita Jita Sika, for example, take this Rupa as object, another Chita Jita Sika take this. Chita as object, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here, why it is not in the same way? No, no, no. Even you recall, I mean, this, this, awareness. Is, this, is, this awareness, when you recall that, right, you saw object in Vipassana, Rupa, and you recall that experience again. Now I am asking you to examine this second observation. When you observe that you observe the rupa, you, ob you, you have an idea of observing rupa, you have an idea of observing if the chitta is clear, at the same time you get a feeling that, you experience, that, that, that it is familiar to you. That experience is you are knowing for the second time. It was not a new experience. If there was no sense of awareness of its own existence, this second recalling 
it will be a completely new experience for you and you will never have this sense of familiarity because this new object you saw this object now when you are recalling back you are focusing on this this object will be completely new to you will be completely new why it is not completely new to you because even at that moment it is observing the object it has a sense of awareness of its own existence so that is why the second recalling when even though you recall focus on the chitta you still feel it familiar to you that it is the second time you are knowing it it is not something completely alien if this awareness was not there this second the second recalling will know it as a completely a new object Uh, know this knowing Chita Chita Sika, that's why this, this feeling, this sense of awareness arises. No, that's why I'm asking. They're recording, they're recording Chita Chita Sika, take this. They take the object. Why is there a sense of familiarity happening? I mean, this recording Chita Chita Sika, maybe take, uh, take the so what I am asking, how it is, why is the familiarity is there? The sense of familiarity, how it came to the second chitta That is my suggested answer. Um, why is uh, the second is a technique to quicker uh, memorize many things to train the uh, super brain? When they were going to try to memory sense it, they create a picture. For example, when I just see the history book said this kind of history things happen, I didn't see it. Uh, but when I read this sentence, the sentence, the words appear in my mind. Even I, when I recall, when I remember hard this, this knowledge, when I recall, the, the words appear in my eyes or the picture. When I read this sentence, the picture appear. Then later, when I remember hard, when I recall this affair, then at that time, the appear, the uh, picture appear again in my memory. Okay. This is uh, uh, one case. So that's why I'm... For the, for the real thing I experienced, for example, I saw the car accident. Then also the picture appear. So I remember this picture. Also, in that when I saw this accident, uh, maybe a, a kind of uh, uh, frightened feeling or uh, a shocked, uh, being shocked feeling arising me. So I also record uh, my feeling at that moment. So how do you know? For example, this is a nice point. The you picture, had a fear. You the had picture and the fear. Is no, this is it. You had a fear seeing the accident. When you recall back this fear. Is this fear, for the second recalling, is this fear a complete new object to you or when you are recalling, you know that you experienced this fear? What I mean is, uh, this uh, uh, two kinds of picture. No, it's not about a picture. Because when the fear observed the object, fear observed the object, if the fear didn't have a sense of its own existence, fear will be a completely a new object for your second recalling. This fear is uh, taken by the second chitta. So the second chitta, when you take it, my argument is, please listen to my argument. The second chitta, when it recalls to the fear, second chitta has a feeling that you have experienced this fear before. Uh, it is not a completely a new object. So thing. why this familiarity is present? Because fear and a sense of its own existence. I'm asking the point is this familiarity. If that familiarity was not there, fear is going to be a completely a new object to you that you are not going to feel that you experience because fear cannot experience itself according to this argument. Fear experiences the object only. When you recall that, you can recall the object, the familiarity, but you cannot have the familiarity regarding your own fear. But when you recall back your own fear, you have a sense of familiarity. You know it was not the it was the same fear that you experienced. So why do you get this familiar feeling? It's because of this awareness. I give the name to the uh, second uh, uh, and uh, recalling. Uh, the recalling is not the same as the second one. Uh, the second one is the immediately knowing my fearness. 
So that's what I'm saying. When you know the fearness, when you know the fearness, why you have the feeling of my fearness? How it happens? If the only, if the entire awareness was wasted for this object, if it doesn't have any idea of sense of existence about its own existence, how do you call it was my fear? Because it has no idea about itself. It only knows the object. So how can the second chitta? You get the idea, it was my fear. Second chitta, I don't refer to recording chitta. Then? For the recording chitta, you can, you, uh, mm, you can call it as the same, no, no, not the Buddha. So, because this... So, there are three kinds of chitta, jitta, sigha. Okay. I refer to. Okay. The second is immediately second. Yeah, the second immediately second. second. Even in the immediate second chitta, jitta, sigha, uh, you have the still feeling, because when you know it's your fear, you remember that terrifying experience on that moment. You know that feeling, you know that taste, you know that sense. So it's not the object. You know that, that's why we call fear is something a terrifying thing. You know the experience, subjective experience, that sense you can feel back. How can you feel back again? If at that moment, if those mentalities didn't have that sense, even the second immediate recalling Chitta Chaita when it records, it has that sense. Because it's not just a recording thing, that's why it's not a, just an information when you're recalling. You know it is something that happened within you. This is the point that in Theravada tradition, we don't discuss with very exact details. But the thing is, my argument is, this Every Chitta Chitta has this awareness of its own existence. That is the nature of Chitta Chitta Sita. Chitta means, the mentality means, it is, that is why it is different from the Rupa. It knows the object together with its sense of its existence. That is an inbuilt quality of the Nama. You cannot separate it from Nama. That it is the Nama itself. So you know this, for example, when you are looking at the breath, for example, now think about a very strong samadhi moment. Now you are focusing on the breath at that moment. Now if you have an experience on samadhi, what do you think? When you focus on the breath, is it just the breath you are focused or you have the feeling you are observing the breath? What do you think? It's not only the breath. If you recall back, you know you were observing the breath. The sense of your existence, sense of your observation was still there. In our tradition, we don't call or don't talk about this sense. Because when we recall any Chitta Chetasika, we know this sense, but we don't separately discuss about this sense. That's why I say, Chitta Chetasikas cannot know themselves as the object. This is different. We are talking about this awareness. I started in the I started the lecture like that. Chitta Chetasika cannot make themselves their object. That is different. I am talking about Chitta Chetasika, the sense of awareness. This is not making the Chitta Chetasika their object. No. How do you differentiate this? That's why that is a practical, that is the inbuilt nature of Chitta Chaita If you remove this awareness, you are only having the experience of outside world and you don't feel the sense of I. I am asking a practical question. Even I was reluctant to accept this idea. That's true. I argue we are the same way as you did. Yeah, sorry, I am not telling that I am correct or you are wrong. Right? So what I want to say is practically if you think, the sense of I that you are experiencing, how do we they get this experience, like this feeling, if we don't have this? Yes. That's why, but Bhatti is also saying, oh. Yeah, that's what Bhatti is asking, as you said, this chitta, this another chitta, could take this experience. That is okay, that is according to Abhidhamma. 
But the thing is, while the second chitta, how did you get that sense of familiarity that you experienced this happiness? How do you experience that you have that terrifying feeling? For this kind of uh, things, maybe they take not only in the picture, but also take uh, the feeling in that moment. Even you observe the feeling, it is not just an object, Sally. When you recall back the Swedagon, and recall, when you recall back your own feeling, yes. there are two experiences. In the second experience, you know that you felt it. When Why it is felt? I mean, for two things. No, 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 I'm talking about why you get that feeling of your own tasting. Why you feel that you tasted it. Regarding Swedagon, you don't feel this. You know it's an outside object. But when you recall back your mental emotions, you know that you had such an experience. You felt it. You, ter you got terrified. You have the taste. That is different. This is a true question. Yeah. My the same uh, question. Yeah. Uh, I already answered why. Uh, what is the uh, uh, difference between my real experience and the real difference? No, yeah, you didn't answer for the familiarity. Because How do you get the familiarity? Uh, I suggest that they take two picture and feeling, take two as object. Uh, I'm not mean to say no uh, because uh, two object exist. Uh, that's why it has the kind of family. So can you explain explain me? When you have that feeling, when you recall back, you know you felt it. Is it just looking at an object or when you know, you know that you felt it? Why this I felt, the idea of I felt? Why, why you don't get that feeling for Swedagon? When you recall Swedagon, you never know, you never feel Swedagon is I. But when you recall Vedana, you know, you feel that I feel it. Because uh, the picture of Swedagon and uh, my feeling, these two... Um, what are the difference? The, these two I always record. No, I'm not... Because why that different sense of... They come, the different sense. They bound together. When this uh, picture appears, that feeling, I record that feeling also, also. No, I'm asking, why do you get that only for feeling as I, but not for Swedagon as I? Yeah. Because... Uh, when you go to the shadow and yeah. it's like uh, the seeing sense yeah. is seeing the, the object, I mean, like the shadow of the yeah. But, like, uh, for other senses, for like smell and like uh, the, the listening, and those senses actually like um, have a different um, aramana. Yeah. And well, we see, uh, while seeing the shadow of Bhagavad, maybe hearing some noises about yeah. people and like smell the uh, other people or like incense, and uh, I feel kind of warmness of the weather or coldness. So like all together, that kind of experience could represent us kind of feeling, I mean like the, uh, the sense of awareness that we exist. Even, even you recall about hearing something, you remember that you were hearing. Even you recall that a warm experience in your body, you know that you felt it. It is not just the heat. You know that you felt it. It was your experience. So the mental concomitants which happened within you, you know that they were your experience. They were just, not just an object to you. When you recall back straight away, you don't get this feeling. But when you recall a mental experience, the whole best thing is happiness. When you recall your happiness seeing a, seeing a wonderful present in the young ages, you never feel the present as you, but you feel the happiness as you. Now take an example, this is happiness, PT. This is the object, present. Now when you recall that, when you recall back this incident, PT cannot, if PT didn't have this awareness, yeah, its entire awareness is dedicated for this person. Right? So when you recall that, this will be another object to you, like a present. 
So you remember, you recall a beating. But why, when you recall that, there is an additional feeling of I felt the happiness. Feeling, felt. So this I felt factor, how did it happen? And if you just recall the present, you don't feel this I factor. So what is the difference of feeling familiarity brought into these two recallings? That is the subjective experience we call. Because the PT itself had a sense of a awareness of its existence. Otherwise, they are just, as you said, they are just two objects. Otherwise, what is the purpose for you to call this as I and not this as I? What is the purpose? How do you explain this kind of self-awareness in terms of reality? It's not a reality. It is a quality of the reality. When you talk about Chitta Chetasikas, you have to talk with this subjective experience. So what happened in Abhidharma for us? When we talk in Abhidharma, we talk about Chitta object. So our full attention was dedicated to this. But if you have experience, practical experience, just think about a good awareness of a breath. At that moment, if it, you just focus on the breath or you have an idea that you are focusing, you are well focused on the breath. It's not only the breath you are aware of. The main object is breath. But there is a slight awareness of your own focus. So that's why when you recall back, you know you are focusing on the object and you know this experience is something that you felt already. It was not something completely new to you, like an alien object. If you didn't have this familiarity, when you recall that, it will be just another object to you and you will never get the feeling of I. The idea of I is based on this quality. This is not found in Rupa. This is only found in Nama. Yes. This is, the, this, is, this is the quality of Chitta Chetasika. That's why I said it is nothing mentioned specifically as separate. No, you don't have reference. I mean, no textbook mentioned Chitta Chetasika has such kind of quality. No, Chitta Chetasika are with such kind of That is the functioning of Chitta Chetasika. That is the practical nature of Chitta Chetasika. You are just going to tell whatever the book says, whatever the book says, doesn't mean that the practical chitta has only these attributes. This is a practical kind of an experience that you we bring with practical evidence. I mean, you know. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, uh, uh, yeah, we, we can ask the questions. Let me conclude the lecture, right? Let me conclude the lecture. So, uh, uh, thank you for your question. I would like that. So, uh, I'll conclude the lecture means I will, I will uh, I'll give the, what I'm going to say in the first and then we will leave the forum open to the questions, right? So, so this, uh, what I want to say is the practical, if you go to the second diagram. Also, oh, first, first I'll read the, uh, first I'll read the, read the paper. So this is a very subtle point, I know that. Subjective experience. Subjective experience is a vital aspect in our lives. It refers to the experience we get while a mental cluster collectively cognizes an object. What sort of an experience we get at that time? In collective cognition, consciousness and mental concomitants focus on an object performing their unique functions. Here, mentalities are considered the subject of the act and what is being known is the object. According to the tradition, in the act of collective cognition, the subjective, uh, the subject and the object can never be the same. Therefore, we get a rudimentary theory as consciousness can never know itself. It means, if said with further elaboration, a certain mental cluster, Chittupada, can never focus at itself, making it the object of cognition. This is a fundamental. A simile is given by some Abhidhamma scholars as a knife cannot cut itself, chitta cannot know itself. However, a certain mental cluster can know or focus at another different mental cluster which arose and passed away in the past and sometimes another mental cluster which will arise in the future. 
Therefore, in an act of collective cognition, a mental cluster knows the object it cognizes. This is a very simple and basic tip. In addition to this knowing, a mental cluster is aware of its own existence. This awareness should not be misunderstood with the mental cluster's awareness of its object. While the Chittupada is well focused, focused upon a certain object, it also has a sense of its focus or cognition. How do we understand that there is such an awareness? It is by the sense of familiarity we have while recalling past subjective experiences. When we recall our past experiences, like seeing someone, hearing a sound, tasting a food or a meditative experience, other than recalling the incident or the object, we also we other than recalling the incident or the object, we also feel a sense of familiarity of the experience, which enables us to have the acquaintance with the past. If further elaborated, when we recall a past experience, we get a feeling as we have been existing at that moment, observing an object. For instance, think of seeing the Stradogon Pagoda in Myanmar. When we recall our experience in seeing the golden monument, we not only recall the object, but also our presence in seeing it. It means that I consciousness, we know it happened within us. Due to this feel, we say, I, swear, swear, I saw Shredagon or I have seen Shredagon. What does this familiarity suggest? During the initial seeing of Shredagon, if the mental cluster had only had the awareness of the golden monument, while recalling, we may only call back the object. We will never get that familiarity. We cannot get that familiarity even when you recall the incident. The feel of familiarity is possible only when the mental cluster had an awareness of its act of seeing the pagoda. In other words, the mental cluster had an awareness of its own existence. So if you go to the next page, we call it mental cluster A initially cognizing mental uh, object A. Then mental cluster B recalling the object B, that is the mental cluster A which cognizes the object A. Above diagram illustrates the functioning of mentalities in the event of recalling a past experience. First we, cognizes, first, we cognize a particular object in the initial cognition. The subject is mental cluster A, and what was being known we cognize is the object A. When we recall back the incident, we recall the mental cluster A with the mental cluster B. At that time, the object B of our mind is the mental cluster A, at that time, the second recalling, the object is the mental cluster A, which initially cognized the object A. Right? We name it ob object B. As the mental cluster A, in addition to knowing the object A, had a sense of its cognition. When we recall the incident with the mental cluster B, we get a sense of familiarity, which makes us to feel, I cognize that object. That sense, I cognize that object. That sense is a certain attribute of the mental cluster A. So therefore, when we recall the mental cluster A with the mental cluster B, we have three types of awarenesses. We recall the incident of cognition, that is the mental cluster A. It is an object, main object. We are aware of the object which was cognized by the mental cluster A, that is to say the object A, and we become sensitive to the awareness of the mental cluster A about its existence or cognition. This same familiarity which is found in all mental clusters is also one of the fundamental attributes to distinguish mere information about past memory, about facts, and from subjective memory. For instance, we read the con con conquest uh, conquest made by Alexander the Great in the 3rd century BC, conquering a massive portion of earth from Macedonia to the river Sin in India. After we read the story, it becomes an information to us. When we think about this information, it appears to us as a mere incident or a fact which we did not experience. On the other hand, we witness a car accident on the road. When we recall back the incident, it is not just an information to us like the story of the Macedonian Emperor. The car accident appears to us as something we witness with first-hand experience. That recalling gives us the feel as I have seen it by myself. When we recall the story of Alexander, whatever incident took place in his expedition were not part of our subjective memory. They are just facts kept in our memory. It means memory about facts. 
but the car accident was not a mere fact memory, not factual, a fact memory, but a subjective memory. The difference of these two memories is owing to the sense of awareness in mental clusters about its own existence while cognizing objects. So if I keep on reading, because to conclude the lecture, subjective experience is the foremost reason for us to have the idea of I, as the mental clusters are aware of their own existence while they focus on objects, we get the feeling as I am watching or I watch. Among the realities which are involved in subjective experiences, Vedana and Sanya greatly contribute to the arising of self-view and the idea of I, Asmimana. Vedana is the mental concomitant which tastes the flavor of the object. It also called feeling. It is also called feeling. The sense of awareness found in the mental cluster about its existence. Feeling gives rise to the ideas of I am feeling or I am, I am with feeling. The Maha Nidesa Sutta, Maha Nidana Sutta, the Buddha mentioned that it is not logical for someone to consider Rupa which is not connected with feeling as I because you don't get that sense of feeling. Sanya is the mental factor which becomes, which becomes sensitive to the unique attributes of a particular object. As each object possesses attributes which are peculiar to it, with sun peculiar to them, right? Uh, sorry, peculiar to it, sorry. With sanya, we are able to recognize the differences in objects we encounter. It. When someone has gathered lots of sanyas, which can observe even the slightest differences in object, in objects, we normally say he is a sub learned or knowledgeable person. This esteem is good food for self-view and self-conceit. With the sense of awareness found in a mental cluster about its existence, perception gives rise to the ideas of I am recognizing, I am knowledgeable, and I have lots of knowledge. It should also be known that not only Vedana and Sanya, but all mentalities such as Chetana, Vitakka, and Vichara do contribute to these wrong ideologies with the aforesaid awareness. There is no mentality which does not contribute to the arising of self-view with the foregone awareness in a mental cluster. So this is what I wanted to emphasize. Yes, so so my idea is, so what I want to explain, when a Chitta Chitta focuses on object, focuses on a um, now, on a um, now, Let's focus on a on So it has an awareness of its own of its, its object and also in addition it has an awareness of its own existence. So what happened with this subjective experience? When we recall that this incident, another Chitta and Chitta. So we remember we have the experience of looking at it, we have a sense of the object, and also if there was happiness, if there was sorrow, if there was fright, we also have a sense that I have experienced it. It is not a new thing for me. So why do we get that experience of now we know, even you quickly recall it, you know that you felt it. If you don't have this awareness, even you quickly recall it, it is going to be a completely a new object. Even after the third chitta you recall, it's just another object. You may use to recall the Sweda one hundred times. It is always going to be another mere object. But the happiness you had is never going to be a mere object to you. It is an object that of your own experience. So why do we get that feeling of fright that you experienced it? The taste, the fright, the burning nature of defilements. How do we get this burning nature, for example? If it was just a mere object, you look at the fire. And you look at it, the defilement, for example, 
So when you recall the fire a hundred times, you don't feel that burning edge is just a colorful object. If you now if you if the defilements are also known in such a manner, you are just seeing a defilement like the fire, you are not going to feel that all entire burning nature that you had at that time. We know how tormenting it was. So why do we get that feeling that I went through this entire suffering? We know it was my pain. I went through it. It was new to me. Because if because we know the Chitta Chetasikas cannot cognize them. So for the second, third, whatever object, it is just an object for you. If you don't feel that burning feeling, if you don't feel that thing, for example, think about the Kaya Vijnana. So the Kaya Vijnana, when you recall back, Kaya Vijnana has an object of Patamidhatu. So if it was just a Patamidhatu, you don't get that feeling that, ah, I felt it. That is different from the object. So that sense of burning, for example, different defilements, why do we feel that I felt it, I experienced this terrible experience? Because even at that time, you felt it. So when you recall it, you know I have already experienced it. If that awareness was not there, even you create a picture, it is going to be like the straight of God for you. You will never get the feeling of I if that awareness was not there. Yes. So I can put my question. Yes, sir. For question. Sanya. Okay, it's a very good question, but this basic. Sanya is found. Now, if there's the awareness was not there, Sanya recalls the object only. Sanya recalls the object. No, the object of Sanya is to know the subtle attributes of the object. So when you recall back this Sanya, how can you have that familiarity? Because Sanya cannot know Sanya according to this. Right? Sanya can never know Sanya. So but when you recall it, is it a new experience for you or is it something that you have already experienced? There is something we feel that we have already experienced. Yes. No, because it's not only sanya. When they ask me, can't it be the function of sanya that you have the burning feeling, you have the pleasurable feeling, you have the comfort feeling, the tranquil feeling, all things you get at that time when you recall. You know that I experience all this. So this is called the subjective experience. Yeah. yeah, so Bhante is asking, Bhante is asking, am I telling there are some Chetasikas? Is there a plus Chetasika about the awareness? No, it is not ultimate reality. This is a nature of all the mentalities. What I am telling is, we study in Abhidhamma about the qualities of mentalities. So this is also a quality of the mentalities. A mentality means Mentality means knowing an object with a sense of its own existence. That is how I define it. No, no, no. There is no nothing, no extra chetasika we are going to add. But I am telling all the mentalities have their own intrinsic attributes. They, for example, dosa is a mentality which goes against the object together with the awareness of its own existence. So, this is an inbuilt quality of the mentalities. We don't discuss this in Abhidhamma. So then when you, deal, when you have studied Abhidhamma to a certain extent, you find what, you will have a question what you are telling. That's why I say, go to your practical experience. Yes. As far as I remember, Sanya was uh, explained that um, we have an experience, yeah. then we, we make a mark. Yeah. Then later we recall and we remember that yes. mark. Yeah. So for me it would be like uh, because we translate it as perception, and if I talk about perception, then it, it yeah. already it seems clearer to okay. me. So um, in the recollecting uh, chitta, so we also have 
uh, sanya, and here the sanya is perceiving that previous experience. Yeah. And it is noting that this is uh, there was this mark. We have experienced this, so it's, it is remembering that this has happened already. But because of the function of sanya, because sanya has the function to make the mark. Sanya makes the mark on the object. Sanya doesn't make the mark on itself. As we are going to tell. But yeah, but it makes the mark on the on the experience of the object also. No, if that's what I'm saying. If you are telling this, that's a good point. If you are telling that there are reasons that, so as you said in your argument, they are saying it also has a certain sense of its own experience. Yeah. So what what I mean is like that. It, this is a kind of a story that, that we make up, no? That that we are this. Yeah, that's it. It's a story. Exactly. It's like a panchati exactly. or it's like a papancha or something. Yes, like exactly. That. And and isn't it? Can we just equate this with the asmi mana? This is the fundamental quality of mentalities which makes you to asmi mana, sakaya, liti, I, all this. As you said, now argument going here is some argue. Awareness is only about the object. There is no such awareness about its own experience, right? So what we are saying is, Sanya is noting this. Sanya is noting about his own experience. So it means what we are suggesting is that there is a certain awareness of its own experience. So that is why you say, when the recalling, you remember, you feel that remember, you experienced it, right? So if Sanya knew only this, for example, Sanya means if the Chitta is knew only this, you cannot, you will not have the feel of familiarity to this. Familiarity is not mean just the object. I'm telling, think about the experience that you have, the burning nature of the mind, the happyful nature of the mind. How they, how you know that you experienced it. What is the difference of just the fire and just the burning of your own mind? Why do you feel that it's your own experience? Because even while it was burning, it had a sense that of its own burning. Yes, sir. Because of this kind of uh, 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 feeling, the call it a feeling. This is this feeling is belong to these people. The, Feeling. Yeah, okay, right, yes. Answer to, to your question. And I, I want to ask, if so. No, 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 what is with, with, uh, feeling you mean? So that's why I'm saying this belongs to this person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This feeling belongs to this person. person. So, why, when you recall no, back. Yeah, yeah, when you recall back the feeling and when you recall back the pagoda, uh, why do you feel? Because uh, this is a uh, uh, feeling of uh, uh, the person, the lama. This uh, is that's why. That, that is that is the thing. Feeling which belongs to the nama. Why you have a different familiarity or recall than you just recall the object? Because there is it is not a mere object to you. It is something that you have experienced. So why? What is this quality? What what made this quality? That is the inbuilt quality of Nama. So I explain it as it had its own awareness of its existence. Yes. You said that the self awareness is the quality of Nama. If so, how can one, uh, how can it is possible to eradicate the wrong view of Atta? Huh? No, Atta is different. Atta is different. It's a basic nature. Yeah, it's a basic nature. nature. Nama. Yes. So this kind of wrong view of I, I so sensing, I do sensing, yes. cannot be eradicated. So when you know that this is the Nama and this is the quality of Nama, yeah. so it is not Atta. It is not Atta. There is no need to eradicate that. You just understand that is the quality of Nama and that is the reason for us to have the wrong idea of Atta. So you eradicate the idea of Atta, understanding its true nature. So we cannot eradicate the reason. You can eradicate the reason. Yeah. Eradicate why you get the wrong Atta feeling because of this Moha. Because of this quality, we add something and we believe there is Atta. So when you know the Chitta Jesikas together with feeling, you don't have the idea of Atta, then you accept this is the nature of Chitta Jesikas and the Atta idea will be removed. You don't need to remove this. So I Yes. 
So I'm talking about each and every chitta has this experience. That is my okay uh, point. So we'll uh, uh, we'll continue with this lecture, and after the lecture, also you can ask questions. Yeah. So thank you for listening. I'll continue the next lecture after two minutes. The time has elapsed. Boop, 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 boop.